What's up, everybody? You're, wa you're watching another episode of Age of Quarantine. My name is Chris Enriquez. I play drums in the band Spotlights. I play guitar in the band Total Meltdown. And I work at Revolver Magazine. And uh, this is a web series that I started a few weeks ago, and it's really taken a life of its own. I'm excited about tonight's episode because as a... Um, as a person that grew up in the New York hardcore scene, one of the people that I think we all sort of came to know and um, have great respect for is the man that you hear in the background. This is Sex and Violence by Danny Diablo, AKA Lord Ezek. He is the lead singer of Scarhead. He's the lead singer of Crown of Thorns. He is the lead singer of The Wilding Incident. He has a podcast, Diablo's Den. He's got his own coffee. He's got a festival called Diablo Fest. He's a rapper. He's a lot of things. And he's one of the most well-known. I'm losing uh, my connection here, so I apologize. Hopefully, uh, we'll stay intact. But, um, you know, I want you all to know that I understand the beef with Trapped is what you guys want to hear about. I'm not going to talk about Trapped for an entire hour. I'm going to start with Danny's story, how he got into music, how he got into hardcore, how he got into hip-hop, graffiti, and I'm going to talk about his life story. Well, I'm just going to hang tight. I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of coffee today. I don't know if it's the coffee or the excitement, but I have to piss my pants. So I'm going to ha hang out and hopefully uh, stay dry here. I don't know, man. Um, we're going to get Danny in here in a little bit. I'm just waiting for him to join us. Shout out to all my friends. Shout out to uh, Chris Santos. What's up, dude? Hugo says there's no audio. Okay. What's up, Drew from A Perfect World? Um, shout out to Drew from A Perfect World. Great New York hardcore band. You should check them out. They have a new video out that premiered on No Echo. He does all the artwork and the flyers. Shout out to Ralph Torres of Total Meltdown for doing all the video editing. All of my past episodes are on my YouTube channel if you look up Christopher Enriquez. And look who it is, Danny Diablo. Here he is. Let's get him on the screen. All right. I think he's going to be popping up here in a second. Oh, shit. Oh. What's Danny up, bro? Diablo. Hey, what's up, Chris? How you doing, my friend? How you doing? Good, good. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly fine. Um, how's the uh, how, how have you been managing to get through the pandemic, my friend? Uh, I'm, I'm stuck with my, my lovely lady, um, Storm. We're here chilling. Uh, uh, actually, I've been I've been doing my, my canvases and selling merchandise, especially the last few days. Because I've been making more money staying home than working construction and doing shows. You know what? <laughs> Danny, let's talk about the merchandise. You ha you make a lot of merchandise. The New York hardcore hats. Yes. What what do you what do you have on sale uh, so that anyone that might want to support you while you're uh, stuck at home? What, what what can they what can they buy? How can they buy it? Well, I, I got a I got a web a web store a DannyDiabloMerch.com. Simple DannyDiabloMerch.com. And uh, right now the hats I they sell them through Generation Records, but they're closed down. So you got to wait to to to, to all this craziness stops and gets back to semi normal. Then you know when Generation Records opens up again, you can get the hats. They look dope, man. Um, I'm you. just gonna let everyone know if you if you have questions, there's a question box on the bottom. Feel free, <laughs> feel free to drop in some questions. I'm gonna try to read your comments, but it's gonna be a little tough. So we'll get. <laughs> I, like I said, you know, to everybody earlier, I gave a little intro about you and your background. We'll get to know you a little better throughout yeah. the hour. Well, I know everybody wants to talk about Trapped, but we're not going to talk about Trapped for an hour. We'll, <laughs> we'll get to it. Yeah, uh, definitely. I want to I talk about your life, your life story. Uh, where, where are you originally from, Danny? I'm, uh, I'm from Jackson Heights, Queens. I'm from uh, Queens, Jackson Heights. Uh, you know, I, I lived there my whole life. Um, then I moved to Woodhaven, but my, my 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 father's family lived in the building where my mother lives now. So basically, I've, I've been going back and forth 
like if my grandmother, my great uncles, my my like grandfather, my aunts, they all live in this building in, in, right across the street from Forest Park, the dome where where John Joseph used to sell angel dust. <laughs> wow. So yeah, so but I grew up at Jackson Heights, right by McClancy High School on Thirty First Avenue, Sixty Ninth Street. Hell yeah, man! Jackson Heights is such a breeding ground for for a for lot hardcore. of hardcore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think even like um, Anthony Comunale and Walter yep. Schweitzer, all Jackson Heights, right? Siv, freaking uh, 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 so many so uh, Gus Straight Edge, Mike Coon. It's it's so many uh. uh, uh it's so many people from there, but yeah, but Anthony Caminale, fucking Broad Deal, you know, that, uh, uh, it's so, so many people from, from Queens. Yeah, that yeah. That were New York hardcore, and it, it was like the mecca of New York hardcore, you know? So, well, I mean, you know, punk rock started in Queens too, which I always like to remind people. Like, I tell, I tell people, listen, the Ramones, everyone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, uh, and, and let's not forget the best food in New York City is in Jackson Heights, so. On uh, 37th, uh, uh, Roosevelt Avenue, you know that. <laughs> So, uh, Danny, what, what are your earliest memories of getting into music in general? Before we get into hardcore, what's oh, your before listen, before I got into into hardcore, I was into hip hop, and uh, before I got, I was into hip hop, like just straight rap, like 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 I'm talking about like Crush. I remember going to see Crush Groove, uh, and I loved 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 rap. Then I got into metal. I got into metal before I got to hardcore. Right. So my friend Teddy Rhodes, I grew up with an uh, Ecuadorian kid who lived next door. He he was like, yo, this is Ozzy. Yo, this is Testament. This is fucking Crocus. I was like, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, I started getting into more. And my, my, my uncle, who was a crazy Puerto Rican from, from Spanish Harlem, was the first guy to show me a guitar. I played classic rock. And uh, I, I fell in love, like, with... with uh, the hip hop shit was dope because I used to break dance, but the metal shit was more like aggressive to me. Just then, and then, yeah. then I was like, when I went to my first uh, hardcore show, I was like, oh shit, I could actually talk to the person with this aggressive music, but go let let off steam in high school, and and and, and it's like almost like fighting, but it's not like it's almost like sparring. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So it's like you get it out, and and when you're a kid, you need to get the energy out and get the stuff out. So. I, I was like, this is my home. And hardcore, I, New York hardcore is my home. You know what I mean? Like, I might rap. I might do this of this, this, the punk rock shit, this metal shit, Ice Pick, Death Star Inferno, but New York hardcore is my home. I thank you for reminding me about Ice Pick because I didn't mention Ice Pick. That was another big deal for a lot of people yeah. that follow you. Um, so what, before hardcore, was graffiti, graffiti and hip hop probably came Yeah, graffiti, graffiti was like uh, the gateway of a like, crime for me. <laughs> it's like straight up, you know, people say marijuana is a gateway for drugs. If you become a drug addict, graffiti is a great gateway to crime. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Being, it's very, graffiti is very, very punk rock. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, I got to say, too, to anybody watching, I think it's mostly people from New York, but like the, the New York hardcore and the New York um, just scene in general, especially. I'm a little younger. I'm going to be 40 this year, so I'm not yeah. that young. But, like, the, the product of our environment uh, is the reason why we were around a lot of violence. And I think you can yeah. probably attest to that. Like, you know, I, 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 don't, I want to talk about you uh, mostly, but, like, my brother-in-law, my first brother-in-law passed away doing graffiti in a train because he got hit by a train. And, you oh, know, man. And, 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 and he was a great guy, and he was in a graffiti crew. But, like, it's uh you know look people can have opinions maybe they don't think that's something you should be doing but it's just a different vibe out here and, it's, and you know, know what it is there's a lot of kids out there who are who don't have anything like in high school or the junior high school and they and, and their parents back in the back in the day well back in the day i'm 48 years old I'll, I'll tell you my age whatever i act like i'm 16 but i'm 48 years old and my, my girlfriend's 27 years old you know, and, and, and she knows I have more energy than, than, she, than, than she does. But the thing is this, when I got into graffiti and, and I, I got into a crew, I felt like I belonged to something. Almost like I was like, you're like suicidal army and when you like all that stuff, when you're like, you want to be belong with something. So when you're a young kid, you meet other graffiti artists and you travel out of your, your, your safe zone. You go to a, you go to other neighborhoods, you start writing graffiti, which is crazy. It's like almost like you can get killed. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you, can get, you get hurt, you get stabbed, you have to watch out for cops, 
It's like when you go to CBT, it's the first time. You're like, oh, shit, I can get killed right. going to the show. You know, yeah. Anything can happen going to the show and coming back to the show. There's and you to survive yeah. the show. You mean? There's a reason why uh, New York hardcore is the way it is. And people, I just wanted to make sure that people understand that because, yeah. you know, for, for, uh, I'm sure that it was uh, even more extreme for you, but it's like, I, I remember what it was like just trying to get a slice of pizza or a cup of coffee and people would just fuck with me for no reason. You have to defend yeah. yourself. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's fucked up, man. You know, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Well, let yeah. me ask you, let's go yeah. over to music stuff. When did you realize that you were very passionate about music? Uh, you know what? I, I played bass. My first thing, my first, I wanted to be a bass player because I was like, uh, bass is cool. I love, I love the bass. I love Rick James. I love that uh, Lemmy from 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 Motorhead. So like, I got a Rick and back in four thousand one, the same one he got. And I was like, I don't play bass, you know what I mean? So and uh, I played in the band called Discipline uh, for Gus Ray sang Mike Cooney guitar, a Harry for twenty five life play drums. It turned into Oceans of Mercy with Franklin from Jackson Heights, who was in Crown Thorns also. And um, then I was like, yo, the singer gets more pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, fuck, no one even cares about the bass player. You mean like, you can be the dopest bass player, no one give a fuck. You mean like Billy Sheen? Like, 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 those dudes are great, but no one give a fuck. <laughs> Billy Sheen can walk past you right now, you wouldn't know. You know, like, who's that guy? What's the uh, UPS? <laughs> you mean like, you see? But the singer, you know, you know, you, you, you if, if fucking Beck walked past me, I'd go, oh, shit's Beck. He's yeah. the singer. You mean? Know, I mean? Unless you're Gene Simmons. Unless you're Gene Simmons. But Gene Simmons, but yeah, he's, he's, he's tall. His son, him and his son walked past me. And, 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 and a NAM convention, with they, they were his son is taller than him. I was like, oh shit, yeah, it's crazy. Yo, yo, you know that's interesting because I thought your first band was Madball when you were playing bass in Madball. I had no idea. No, no, I, I, I played only. I was, I had a short stint, and uh, I, 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 I'm the reason why Hoy has a career. I made, I was like, yeah, I passed it down. So you play for Madball. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, yeah. So, so, um, you when, uh, you know, there, what were the first venues and shows? That you started going to, I actually, I, th I know the answer. I think just from no having mutual friends, like how you got into it. But yeah. just real quick, how how did you get into hardcore and punk rock, and what were the shows and venues you were going? Uh, to? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the craziness. So I, I went to Bryan High School in, in, in Queens. Uh, of, you know, so Bryan High School, I went to high school with Sasha Jenkins and Chaka from from Orange Nine Millimeter, uh, Burn, and I also Free Five, the Free Artists from Woodside Projects. So I. The Bryan High School is in the projects, and so it's crazy. So, so I, I I would walk to school. Then I was in gym class, and I was the sausage looking at me. I had a beat. I had a Beastie Boy patch on my fight jacket, and he was like Beastie Boys. I was like, yeah, I like Beastie Boys. You know, hardcore. And he was like, yo, what do you know about hardcore? Then then we became friends. And Sasha and I started writing graffiti together. Then we, then he's like, yo, I'm gonna take you to my first show. I went to my first show when Orange Orange Chaka and Sasha brought me to my first show. Shout out to Chaka. I love Chaka. He, he's, Chaka, uh, and Chaka, uh, Sasha Jenkins, uh, uh, Chaka's uh, father passed away. So uh, rest in peace to Chaka's father. Yeah, and, and you know, re that, I didn't know that. So I got to send him my condolences. And Chaka's father yeah. actually took the uh, the iconic photo on the Burn EP. That's very sad. Yeah. Um, I think sucks. he took a lot of those photos. Um, Crown of Thorns, I mean, I, you were going through your uh, history. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot, so I'm gonna breeze through some things. But um, you you were uh, playing bass in some bands, then you yeah. played bad ball briefly. When yeah. did, uh, when and how did Crown of Thorns uh, get back to you? By the way, Crown of Thorns, I love everything you've done. Crown of Thorns is my favorite. I love Crown of Thorns. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Means a lot. You're, you're, Crown of Thorns will always be my baby because uh, uh, it's like when I when I did Crown of Thorns. Franklin and I grew up in the same neighborhood, and Franklin was like a, a, a Franklin was best friends with my 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 my, my partner in crime, JM from GMS. Shout out to Demetrius Babusis, uh, JM. He he was my partner in graffiti. So his brother Andreas was best friends with Franklin. So I used to see Franklin and Andreas together. And Fra Franklin had a shaved head like a boy bod, like shaved the side like boy bod. Oh, you know, you know, they were they were they were like metal heads. They were wearing slave shirts. So I was like. Yo, so something happened. I, 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 I went to beat up Franklin for something. But <laughs> a normal boulevard, I pushed him in front of a car, and then we became friends. <laughs> they, they were like, yo, let's do a band with Mike DeJohn. He knew he was playing with Mike DeJohn and a whole bunch of stuff. And his kid Randy from high school was in a band called Show of Force with Mike DeJohn. Okay. So, so then, then uh, Mike DeJohn's like, hey, uh, I got stabbed up in 90, 
93, I got stabbed up. And uh, I was in the hospital, I was about 12, I said, let's do a band. And from there, when I came out of the hospital, we did the band. And fucking crowd throwing stories. It, it's, it's Mike DeJohn, I know it's crazy. He changed his whole life, his life around. Mike DeJohn was a crazy motherfucker. He was like a story of white trash at his finest. You know what I mean? I know, so, man. So crazy. Yeah, like, but he, he's a good, he's a, a talented motherfucker. Yeah, it, 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 I, I know that Mike, Mike and I, we, we, we're, we're both hard-headed, no matter what. But the thing, it, people, I know, and people know that when we, we're together, we make great music, you know? Yeah, Crown, uh, Crown of Thorns was very uh, different, I think. For, you know, when I first saw and heard of Crown of Thorns, it was in effect fanzine. And, yeah. uh, you know, man, I'm not trying to fucking blow smoke up your ass or anything like that, but when I saw the photo... Just yeah. looking at the photo from what I was used to, I came up in the Long Island hardcore scene. So yeah, yeah. It wasn't, a, we had like neglect was pretty hard and, um, you know, tension and some, so we had come some, some heavy bands, but like, yeah. I was just terrified just looking at the picture of you guys. <laughs> like, you know, you know, people, listen, people say that all the time. When people meet me, they think I'm like six foot five steroids. And I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? You remember? It's, yeah. You know what? I, when, when I was young, I did a lot of crazy shit, but I had to because it was, it was a world, uh, where my world at the time, uh, no cameras, no video, shit. People will test you and do shit to you. So you had to do something to people back. So it, it was a very dangerous time. Since you go to CBGBs and then the graffiti thing, you know, people got killed over graffiti beef. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it was such an intense time. But when I did Crown Thorns, the reason why Crown Thorns was so dope is because when I did both of those both of those, the EP, Train Up Blues, and Mentally Vexed, the full length album, I was going through hard, hardships and turmoil and sadness. And basically, my brother killed himself. So when I did the EP, then, then, then when, when, then my other friends, when I did the album, my, my, my friends, my friends died. You know, my, my other friends killed himself. Yeah. It was just horrible. You know, Yas passed away, shout out to Boston Mike. You know, all these, everything in my life has been, Good, but also bad. It's a it's a balance, and that's how that's how the world is. Yeah. Your lyr your lyrics back then, I can tell because it was it's very different from uh, yeah. you know from it, the stuff. You know, Mike Dijon also like you were saying, like the band. Uh, you would think like because of Madball and and like most of the New York hardcore bands at the time were more uh, traditional sounding. Like, but, like beat like beat down like beat down. We were we were, we, were we, not. we we sounded like Rush. It was very progressive, and it yeah, sounds funny. Yeah. Like yeah. I was surprised because even when you put on, uh, you know that the, my favorite sample because a lot in the '90s, a lot of people would use samples from shit, and like yeah. I love how it opens up with the new sample about skinheads at CBG, yeah. but then Mike's guitar comes in. Honestly, man, it was like um, more like like I don't even know how to describe it, but it was a little artsier, like as for as tough as you guys were, it was a little on the artsier side of hardcore, and and. And people that uh, might have known you from your hip hop career and yeah. Scarhead, if you listen to the Crown of Thorn stuff, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's 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 so it's so insane it's, it's so insane and thank you so much for that. I, you know, we we recorded two new Crown of Thorn sh songs a few years ago, four years ago, five years ago with Bridge Nine, and and I did the lyrics still were dope too. It's 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 a, when I do Crown of Thorns and we are going to do a new album, me and Mike. Good, it's, it's all going to be. It's it's my it's my baby is from the heart. You know I mean it's like I always tell people that lyrically when I, when I do like 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 when I look into other people's music and stuff at that time too I was listening to uh, Smashing Pumpkins the double album with fucking you know with the, like the, the sad songs yeah and yeah it's very it's very uh, like like those those lyrics right there whenever something happens I listen to that shit or whenever I, I, I have any kind of heartbreak I'll play that the, the, the infinite sadness all night and I'll skip the hard ones and just the sad songs right? nice nice <laughs> I gotta send you my band because it's not hardcore it's more like that but, uh, good but I, I, I love that shit bro you mean I, I, I love I love good there's only two types of music good and bad yeah no I feel you so, uh, so that's good. I was going to ask you about Crown of Thorns material because I know you got back together and it's great. Yeah. It's great. Uh, how did uh, Scarhead come together? Oh God, Scar Scarhead! Yeah. Uh, we were doing that. There's a there's a there was an EP that uh, that EP uh, what's it called? Uh, a whole bunch of bands, a co compilation. Uh, New York's Harness, and they're like, yo, uh, 
I'm doing a, a compilation, though, the girl that ran it, and I was like, oh, I got another band called Scarhead. I just made it up. It was like, I said we had music, but we had nothing. So with me, Hoya, but we, we went to go a Big Blue Mini record. We had no songs, and I took a whole bunch of acid. So, <laughs> back in, so we, we were driving the van. Hoya was in the van with us, and we, and we, and we, and we, I, was, we were, I was humming this, the, the, the riffs to them, and we wrote those two songs. Hardcore and uh, we, and uh, trusted. Oh, we wrote that in the van, tripping on mes on mescaline. You and you and Hoya, me, all of us. I gave mescaline to everyone. Wow, Bundy, wow. You know, and Mike Design was like, "What the hell's going on?" You know, it was the funniest laugh. We we're all in the van and we got lost. And this is back in the day. <laughs> this, is not, this is like '95. No cell phones. We had to call. We had to call the people on the payphone, and we're all tripping. We know we're, we're in Jersey for the first time. I didn't even know. I never been to Jersey really. I was like, "What the fuck?" You mean it was, it was a different world for us? But Yo, we, we, Scar, did, we did some good music. Scarhead, uh, Scarhead probably got like the furthest right in your in your entire career than any of your bands. I'm, I'm guessing because like you toured with like Motorhead. At one well, we, we, we got thrown off. <laughs> oh man, let me throw us off, but but. <laughs> <laughs> Levy, I, I got a story for you. Levy threw us off the Motorhead tour. Oh, so, something, somehow, some crazy shit. Happened. Oh, I can talk to this right now. But let, let me rest in peace. Well, let's have We toured with Motorhead. We, had, we always had, uh, like, Boston Mike has his crew. With, but, like, we always went to tour. So, one of, I'm not going to say no names, but one of, something happened. And, and, and we drank his Jack Daniels, and he $2,000 was missing. So, of course, we got blamed for it. And uh, then, then we, then we, uh, we, we played the shows, we got thrown off. Then it, 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 it was one point I was on a bus with, with Lemmy, and uh, I was like, oh, I, I gave him a brand new Jack Daniels because I worked at Chalmers Industries, the liquor warehouse. And I gave him a, a, like a 500 dollars Jack Daniels. I said, here, sorry about that. He's like, thank you. Then, guy, then the, what's the, the drummer's name? The, what's the drummer's name? Uh, me, uh, oh, oh, Phil? Was Phil, name? Phil, Phil, Phil was like, he, he tried to say something. And I was like, yo, I'll, and this is a, a true story. And because I love King Diamond shit, right? So he, but he said something like, yo, Get fun, like out here. I was like, yo, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> wow. Yo, change up to like that. And and I was like, what? And me and Boss Mike, we went, left. I felt, I said, I, I can't believe Motorhead just threw us off. That's how crazy we are. So I wow. but this is a cool thing. A few oh, years no, no, later, so Mickey, Mickey D. It was Mickey yeah, D. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Phil remember, So I, I I see Remy a few years later, and we're, and we're in a big festival, and I'm behind a fence. And I see him, I said, yo, Remy, what's up? And he goes, what's up? I go, can we talk? We, we start walking, he comes up to me, I go, is that everything cool with us now? He goes, yes. I go, all right. And we shook hands. <laughs> and I, I felt good that, 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 that before he passed away, that we didn't have beef. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yo, you know, I looked up to that guy. I was like, oh, this guy, I got thrown off a tour by, 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 by Lemmy, but, not, but we shook hands. And I was like, thank God that happened. You know what I mean? So, oh, man. It's such a big deal when New York hardcore bands get on tours like that. And, like, oh. you know, and back then it happened a lot. Like, I, I had, um, John from Canzeria on last night, like um, uh, King Diamond. Good guy, good guy. He's the best, he's the best. Good guy. King Diamond took out uh, uh, Canzeria back then, and and you guys were on tour with Motorhead. It's yeah. so crazy, man. Um, and I just saw Agnostic Front with uh, Misfits, which was amazing. But um, yeah, I love yeah. I love when that happens. And, and just real quick, I'll give a shout out. I know that Crown of Thorns was supposed to do a tour with uh, Sick of It All and Agnostic Front, and then the pandemic yeah. happened. So. Hopefully, when this shit is over, you guys will get back on your feet and go out. They said they're supposed to be in August. They said, I, 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 listen, that's like one of the biggest tours that we, I, I, we got on. And I was like, and, and, you know, I always call that the New York hardcore curse. Yeah. <laughs> when shit goes good, blah, it goes right. It, 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 like, New York hardcore, no matter who in the New York hardcore makes it, it, it the curse comes and gets you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody, somebody asked an interesting question. Was Todd Youth and Motorhead when you guys were on tour? No. He was not. Okay. No. And Okay. Uh, guys, I see I got a bunch of questions. I'll get to them in a second. I just got a couple more before we go there. But um, um, so we, yeah, we, we'll go through a little bit. I know that you were doing uh, – when, when did you get the uh, hip-hop career started? When did you start doing that? Yeah, you know what? The, the, the first – me, me, Hoy MQ were going to do a hip-hop group called The Murder Squad, DMS, back in the day. So <laughs> – and, and we had, we did like a few songs. We did like two songs, and uh, then 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 we then we, he, we started Madball. He was, we got, the, the, like, he's like we Madball, and we started hanging out. Then I started doing my shit. But the first thing I ever did in hip hop that made me famous 
was uh, with the transplants, Dream. Drug yeah. through everything around me. What me and Skinhead Rob, so and, and Travis Barker. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. Tim from Tim from Ratchet. So and hope I, I just think the, the record just went gold. So I I should be getting a gold record for that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like I, I was playing Sex and Violence when we started, and I know you yeah. did stuff with Tim Armstrong and yeah, Tim's a great guy. Yeah. You want? Uh, you, let's take some questions, and then uh, sure. I know you wanted to announce some new projects and some things. So let's take the questions real quick. Let's right. see. Let's see if we got any good ones. Okay. Uh, James Mayday wants to know what is Ezek's favorite city to play outside of the Northeast. Ooh, uh, favorite city to play outside of the Northeast. Um, I, I this is crazy. Um, Florida, Florida, uh, Florida's like, like uh, Orlando, Miami, are always good. Uh, there's other places that are really good, but like, but Florida, you know, like, like. I guess yeah. Orlando, Miami, I always like second home doing that out there. Um, I don't know. It's 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 it's, it's sometimes we'll play freaking these, these little places. It'd be great, but like it's, it's insane. You know what I mean, we yeah. we always, I always have no matter where I go, my fans come and we have a good time. No matter what, how many people are there, it's amazing. You know what I mean? So, okay, uh, a fair eleven. What is Danny? What is Danny's favorite after party spot in New York? Can I take a guess? What, what, what? I think I know what it is. Jones, Where is it? Jones Beach and bed Yeah, uh, yeah, but Jones Beach from far, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I, yeah, but it's like, like I, uh, the Spence, my boy Spence, who's in Scarhead, owns it. So, yo, know, it's like, it's our little hideaway. <laughs> spot, it's a tiny little spot that's by my place. I love that place. Okay, place good. take another question. Let me see what else everybody wants to know. Uh, Ezek got trapped shit in their pants. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, total Kenny. What is the sock of death? I don't even uh, know what I'm talking about. What uh, is that? I'll tell you what sock of death. Sock of death is uh when we used to put an eight ball in a, a tube sock. I used to put two an eight ball with two two uh long socks. So and and we have beef hit someone in the face or head with it. Wow. All right. So I guess. <laughs> I guess I guess we know what uh, what Trapped has coming. Uh, we're gonna get into this, but I'll, I'll do this here. Jared seventy seven. Ezek got trapped shit in their pants. <laughs> Yo, the, 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 no, did you see what he just tweeted to me? No, he tweeted right now, like like five hours ago, a picture of him naked. It says Thug Life on his thing. Yo, I think that that guy deleted all of the uh, all of the. I'm telling you, right? I just looked at him. He, he picture. He, he took a picture of selfie of him in the mirror. It's him naked in the gym. It's his thug life. And I, he's, <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro, stop sending me nudes. But he doesn't want to fight me. I, I, I listen. I, I'll tell you right now. I, I, listen. I, I, I just, I don't give a fuck about Trump politics or anything like that. I tell people all the time, like, keep that out of, my, out of the music. You know, it's bad enough. But we have a hard, like. Other things to deal with, then we got to deal with people talking politics. You know what I mean, but yeah. it's like when I listen to music, I, I want to be happy. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna, my thing is this: I'm gonna get through a couple of quick comments and questions yeah. here. Got to read this one. Respect from Brazil. Nice. Yeah, I, I got a lot of fans of Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. Shout okay. out to Brazil. But shout shout to fucking uh my my boy Supla from Brazil. Okay, and then here's a good one. Eighteen Savage. What is your favorite song off of Mentally Vexed, and why? Ooh, that's crazy. Uh, oh, is it Crown Thorns? I'm staring out the window as I'm riding on the J. That, that's that, and I love love sick. <laughs> um, uh, there's a couple of comments and, and things I'm not gonna read, but uh, let's. <laughs> What's up, Black Day? Uh, yeah, we're gonna What's try. Up, to keep it. We're gonna try. Um, okay, who? <laughs> Drew Castle. Uh, Drew Willis, who's the softest New York hardcore band? <laughs> oh, yo, you know what? I, I make fun of a lot of bands, but I can't do that. Man, I want to listen. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Like, and, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I, if I don't have a problem, I'm not gonna hurt their feelings. I can't. Do okay. That. All right. So I'm not. I'm not gonna go. Okay. And shout out to uh, your guitar player, a good friend of mine, uh, James uh, Merciful Fade. Who, yeah. Uh, he wants. He wants everyone to check out his band Luger. Check out Luger. Luger. Also. The first singer of Scarhead with me, and Al, it, it, my boy Deep's on there right now. What's up, Deep? Okay. All right. So uh, let's go to this. Um, 
Okay, you oh, want to sure. you want to you want to announce some things. You got some new projects, and uh, you got yeah, I, I got a oh, I got a I got a I got a hip hop project called Spick with me, Joe Fado. <laughs> Joe Fado was on the live at the barbecue with Nas. So Joe Fado is like worked with, with Big Pun, Fat Joe, one of the first Puerto Rican rappers from New York City. Uh, we have a, a Big Lito. So it's me, Joe Fado, and Big Lito. Big Lito's Dominican, Fado's Puerto Rican, I'm Puerto Rican. So it's called Spick, Spanish People in Control. Uh, we finished <laughs> it up, we're talking, we're talking to a, a label in, in, in France that we're gonna put out with. So that's almost done. I got another uh, uh, project called uh, uh, GLD Casket Company. God loves God loves the devil casket casket company with me and Chubby a uh, Chubby Chubby guy, me and Chubbs, Chubby guy, and Lord Jewish. Uh, I got Diablo's Den podcast. Uh, yes, I, I like I love that podcast. It's some good episodes. I, you know, it's, 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 it, I, I love doing that because I I, I can say what I want to say. And I love talking to people and, and, and pushing buttons and getting people like crazy and ha make people happy, man. You know? So oh, also, my... I'm doing I'm doing a project with uh, Jay Reasons. The guy is doing a project it's called Danny Diablo and the New York Hardcore All Stars. And I got it's gonna be a metal hardcore project. I'm gonna do it with different singers. I'm getting Randy uh, uh, from Lamb of God on the song. Catch one from uh, Show Me the Body. Uh, I, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of metal and, and hardcore singers on it, so that's gonna be this year, later on this year. It's gonna be hard. And I also got Death Star Inferno, which is my crossover band. Sounds like Machine Head meets Carnivore. Huh? Fuck yeah, man! I, and and by the way, I love I love uh, Show Me the Body is a very fresh band. They're uh... well, they're amazing. They 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 are before the time, but they're doing it. They're, they're doing shit that that. that it's fucking crazy, but makes sense. You mean so original, and I'm glad that you have respect for those guys. Like I, I like I said, I'm 40, and I felt I felt mad old when I went and saw them. Um, oh yeah, the kids love them. The young kids love them. And yo, if they, if if anyone thinks that like the punk or hardcore scene is dead, go see Show Me the Body. I've never seen any of these kids in my life, and <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere, out, right? <laughs> they pack out, and people go crazy, man. Great band. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, I see there's a lot of questions coming in, but um, let's see. What do you, uh, what do you, um, <laughs> what do you want to say to traps? Fuck it. Let's just get into it. What, what do oh, you just, just, Listen, listen, that whole thing, listen, I, listen, I'm not, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm not into politics. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not like, fuck you, you love Trump. I don't, get, I don't give a fuck, man. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like when Trump got, when Trump got elected, I was like, Yo, give the guy a chance. He's from Queens. You know what I mean? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't vote. I can't vote. So it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, so the thing is this. He, this guy was talking shit about to Ice-T. And Ice-T is, you can't, how the fuck are you going to talk shit to Ice-T, bro? Like, right. like, that guy's a pioneer. When I was a kid, I, listen, from when I was a kid, I loved Ice-T for colors, man, for breaking. This guy, everything Ice-T did. Then uh, I played shows with him. Then uh, I did a song with him, with, with, with Ice Pick, real, like Ice Real. Then when I see that, he gave me mad love. So when he starts talking shit, I, just, I, I wasn't going, I, I didn't know who the fuck Trap was. You know what I mean? So I was like, yo, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then guy starts talking shit. I was like, I'm funny. I, I, was, I have no filter. So I, I was destroying the guy. But the guy, the guy, he he doesn't know about hardcore. The guy, the poor guy's probably at home, probably drinking by himself, like taking pills. And, but, you know, he's like, whatever. So he, but I, the, the Power Trip guys, I heard they were going hard at it. I, I love Power Trip. Those guys, Power Trip is phenomenal. Yo, that, that's a, I love thrash bands. You know, I, 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 you know, I love hardcore. So Power Trip, the guys were, were, were fucking from it. That guy, the singer doesn't bother nobody from Power Trip. He's like a nice guy. So, yeah, but then he was fucking guy. with, he's fucking all these dudes. He wants to fight, but he won't fight me. Come on, I, I, listen, you know that. I will fight that guy for charity. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I, I'll fight for, for the Children's Tumor Foundation. I will fight that guy. Yo, the guy's younger than me. The guy's taller than me, whatever. Yo, the dude, everyone thinks the dude, you look at the dude, the dude, the dude's crazy because I, I can see in him that he, that dude is, is definitely not all white. So I know he's not, he's probably half Spanish or something. So, but, but he acts like a white boy, but whatever. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying, like, yo, I, the dude, the, the, he, he calls all these guys out. I would love to fight that guy right now for, for charity. That's it. Yeah, I, I want no money. I, I, you know what? 
if he would fight me, I would get the guy mad respect. It would be cool. You mean? Right. It would right. be cool. It would be good for him, for his band. You mean? So he's not a pussy. And it would be good for me. So for my for, for my band. And also, the kids will make money by way. So it would be great. Yep. And, and then we talked about this on Friday, too, which is that, like, <laughs> New York hardcore, uh, as 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 much as the reputation seems to be violence and all this stuff, there's always been benefits and charities, and I think that yeah. this is like a very um, uh, there's evidence that like you want to take a negative situation and turn it into a positive. And I know Gavin, shout out to Gavin. Shout out to Gavin. Yeah, Ga this was Gavin's idea on Friday. <laughs> you know, Gavin. Gavin's actually my personal trainer. I, yeah. I train and do uh, kickboxing with him, and I've. I've Taking some lessons from Craig Satari too. So. Craig, Craig is amazing. Craig's an amazing person. Craig, I, uh, Gavin, and Craig are, are two two guys who are very skilled, and they're amazing people. And I'm so happy to be like under those guys in hardcore. You know what I mean like like yeah. those guys like Craig? They they I, they know who I am really. They they know me as a little kid. You know what I mean? But but I, listen. Maybe I should have been a professional fighter, you know? but if I was a professional fighter, I, I could have been, I would have been half retarded right now if I didn't speak to you. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, seriously, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Things, things happen for a reason. <laughs> well, we, we, uh, we, we talked about how, like, if, if the guy from Traps, Chris uh, Brown, I think is his name, uh, yeah. was willing to, to, to actually accept, they would want to do a professional thing. Yeah. Uh, Friday night fights and broadcast it and donate money. So, um, you know, who knows? I, I mean, I think people have tried to reach out to the guy, and I don't think anyone's heard back from him. Yeah, we should do, we should do, uh, like, uh, once a year at Gavin's fucking place, like, a, a, a beef thing. Like, 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 I'll fight Harley Flanagan for MMA any day for money, for, 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 for the children, for charity. I won't take any of that money. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just want for charity, but I will fuck these guys up. So, yeah. Like, Listen, I, I'm 40 years old. I, I am who I am. I smoke weed. I party. I fucking go out. I have a good time. But if you put me into into a, 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 a professional fight, I box my whole life. I did I I I, I did grappling when in 1994. I did Muay Thai. I I would I would go right back into. I'm a, I'm an athlete. I played basketball my whole life. Everyone knows I'm an athlete. I I, I train. I work out. No, listen. Oh man. I, I would I, I would destroy both of those guys. I don't think anybody doubts it, man. And, uh, you know, there's something to be said. I mean, people can train, but then there's the streets, too, you know? So the yeah, street, yeah. Uh, well, no, street, no. Listen, streets, listen. I'll tell you right now, street fights, uh, 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 that's, that's, that's why I tell people that it's, nowadays it's not even worth it. You get older, you get into street fights, just walk away. Sometimes you have to do something. But listen, yeah. I've been stabbed four times, bro. You know, it's like, like, like I'm lucky to be alive, you know what I mean? And, you, and, like you survived Tupac, man. You made it. You're like Tupac, but you're still, you still. Yeah, it's, 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 you know what? I, I I keep on thinking that I'll do like like stop that shit. And it, like I told you, I got stabbed last year. It, it was up to like up to a, a month ago. I couldn't do twenty push-ups because I got stabbed up. Up in my 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 my, in my, my arm over here, and fucking, I stopped the guy from. It was a, it was a yeah. horrible situation, bro. It was a horrible situation, but but I got stabbed twice, and fucking and they and the, the, the weather. I try I try to do the right thing, but shit happens, bro. You mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, uh, let let's uh let's take some questions. <laughs> Why don't we take oh, yeah. some questions? Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we got a bunch of questions. Um, just okay. Uh, what's this? Just want to say thank you for so many years of music, John Costco. Thank uh, you, Costco. All right, thank you, Costco. Somebody earlier asked if you had any uh, 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 funny Vinny Stigma stories that you could tell. Oh hell yeah! What's your favorite uh, one? What's your, what's your favorite one? Uh, me and those. So, so so one time, so nineteen ninety five, we went to our Crown Thorns in Madball. So this is, we were on a double, like, a, a, we are on one bus, not double, day, a regular bus, it was a, a city bus, and, and, and it was just a city bus painted in black, and uh, me, everyone's going crazy, we are like, almost like a two-month tour, so me and Hoyer would, and Freddie would fuck with Stigma, like, the old guys and us, <laughs> and we're like, yo, Stigma, Stigma was being, like, was cracking, so we were, like, like, talking, we were playing the Biggie Smalls record. Uh, when it first came out, he's like, "Oh, turn that shit off." We play it loud, like, "Yo, going crazy." So one day, 
We're like, yo, it's Hoyer and I. Hoyer was getting a, 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 like, like, oh man, die, oh man. And he's like, fuck you. So he one day he went to get away from us and went over in the back, but he didn't know that in the back we were we were in the front talking in the microphone, just speaking back there. Like, you can't get away from us, old man, die. Yo, he went crazy, he ran. Out. He got out. He like, fuck you guys, and left us. But Stigma used to make me steal all the hemp of vice, uh, the vice and uh, uh, beer mugs. On tour. On tour. They, they make me, back in the day, you could carry whatever you want onto a plane, and you wouldn't get charged anything. So I would have two cases of beer mugs from Stigma on the plane and we're going through, through TSA. It was, it was insane. He would steal everything. He's a real OG, man. That, that yeah, he's a, I love, he made me, I would, Stigma, Vinny Stigma is the nicest person in the world, and he he opened up his house to us when we were like 16 years old, and we yeah. would be, we would be doing terrible things in the neighborhood, and <laughs> the headquarters was, was Stigma's house. That's amazing, man. Bad Boy Rue wanted to know what your favorite uh, place to eat in Queens is. What say what, what? What's your favorite place to eat in Queens? Uh, Bad Boy Rue wants. Oh, to look, I, I would say uh, uh, Danny's Pizzeria. Okay, there you go, Danny's Pizzeria, appropriately named. Um, I got a good one for you. Uh, top five New York hardcore bands. Go. Ooh, and I, I would say five in, 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 in no order. Actually, wait, make it make it records too. Records. So so Agnostic Front, Victim and Pain, for example. Yeah, of course, Agnostic Front, Victim and Pain. Uh, Killing Time, uh, the, 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 their, 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 uh, their first album. First yeah. album. That's, that's the Bright first side. album. Bright Side. Uh, Bad Brains, uh, Quickness, because I love putting the older stuff. Uh, Chrome X, Age of Quarrel. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Uh, you got one more. You got one more. I know. I would say Underdog, 7 Inch. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, 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 but you mean I love Underdog, bro. You know what I mean? Richie might be the best singer, actually, when you think about it, when it comes uh, to... I, 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 if you ask if the best singers are Richie Underdog, Jimmy Williams, and Eddie Leeway. Jimmy Williams never gets enough props. Never man. gets... You know why he never gets? Because if, if Jimmy Williams looked like me, he was pretty, he would be a millionaire. But he yeah. looks like the thing. <laughs> Somebody, uh... uh <laughs> I don't know if you know this. I used to work at Fontana's in the Lower East Side. Oh, I remember um, that. Yeah. So uh, uh, somebody asked, I'm guessing they asked this question because I used to work there, but uh, which is, by the way, funny story about um, that's how I met everybody. Uh, Cousin Joe. Oh, that's from, met, from downstairs, the downstairs room they had. That's how yeah. I met Freddie. That's how I met Jimmy Gestapo. That's how I met all the guys. Oh, the, 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 the kid passed away from Fontana's, the bar back guy. He was the best. Wait, you're talking about Pat? Yeah, he passed away, best. right? Oh, that guy was so cool. I love that guy, man. Nicest oh. guy. So, um, Drink to Remember wants to know if you have any funny stories from Fontana's. Any good stories from Fontana's? But, that was a weird part of my life. I, I, I would go there to meet all these guys. Sub Zero would play. It was, it was weird. I, I, we'd go downstairs. The, the girl who owned it, the lady who owned it. it was, uh, Dini. Yeah, it was a weird part of Chinatown. It was just weird to get to, and and we would get there, we would be so we would get so fucked up in that place and come out and be like, oh my god, you mean know like what the <laughs> fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Oh but my yeah, god, we all we it, uh, they always took care of us. That's what I'm saying. So it's always, always good times there. Now it's now it's like some health food restaurant, man. It's so crazy, <laughs> dude. I. I, no one talks. There's some like underground places that people don't uh, talk about. You know, like everyone talks about CBs and Manitobas yeah. and all like wetlands. But uh, I remember, dude, I saw some like salsa band playing one day, and Jimmy Williams was playing drums. And I'm like, yeah, Shit, I think that's the dude from Maximum Penalty. But uh, that was a big New York hardcore hangout spot in the Lower East Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jim, Jimmy Williams is a talented drummer. Also, he can play. He's a talented drummer. Jimmy Williams' godfather is Duke Ellington. I didn't know that. That's fucking crazy. His father is Skip Williams and Pinky Williams' his uncle. So they were they they played with Duke Ellington the whole life. So yeah. there's a picture of, of Jimmy Williams naked on on the, the piano with Duke Ellington playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Drink to Remember wants to know, uh, were you at the Carnivore show in 2006? Where? Lucky 13? I guess he's talking about Lucky 13. Oh, right? no, no, no. 2006. Uh, no, that... Yeah, I, I don't. I, I've been. I the last carnival show I ever saw was fucking at the limelight. Yeah, he must be talking about a different thing. Yeah, man, the limelight. Jesus Christ. What yeah. yo? What were your favorite venues back in the day to go to? 
The Ritz? The Ritz? Yeah. The Ritz, Roseland, uh, CBGB's, Lemoore's, you know? Yeah. Those are places I love. Coney Island High was the shit. That's how, that's when I first, and Wetlands, like, that's when yeah, I first. Wet, Wetlands and Coney Island High were different. It was like, it was like more nice. I, I, I worked at Coney Island High security, so it was cool too, right? Isaac, I remember a story. I never told you this. I mean, I don't see you often, but I remember the first time I saw you, I was at a VOD show or maybe H2O and someone called them sellouts and you must have been doing security, but you just rolled some guy down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, it was an all ages show. I was 16 and I saw you throw a guy down the stairs in a garbage can out the door <laughs> like a comic book or something. And I was like, oh shit. I never saw okay. anything like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, le I learned that move from John Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. What else do we got here? Uh, Hugo Fitz, ask about COB. Uh, okay. Uh, it's What's not COB? A, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what that means. Okay, we're just going <laughs> to I mean, it's either... All right, what's this? Can I just made up <laughs> Food and cats. Any memories from trips to Boston, Brockton, Massachusetts? Whoa. I, listen, I used to go to Bro we used to go to Brockton. I would say Boston, but fuck that. Brockton, Massachusetts, one of the hardest fucking uh, suburbs of, of, of Boston, of, I guess. But Brockton, you know, that's where Marvin Hagler's from, right? The, uh, so it's like the hard people from Brockton Marcialis from Brock Brockton, right? And Marvin Hagler, the boxers. It's this hard, hard Irish white trash kids and hard uh, Cape Verdeans, you know, the Dominicans out there. It was, it was crazy. It was real crazy. I used to go out there with MQ and we used to bring Angel Dust and fake twenties and fuck up their whole con fuck up their whole economy. We used to go to uh, you know, fake twenties. We used to go there and fake twenties and, and we'd go to the, the, the titty bars and hot dog stands, seven elevens, <laughs> and they didn't they didn't know. They didn't, they, you know, just this is New York City they know, but Boston they don't know. Boston is is like a suburb of the, the New York City. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like they didn't know about that kind of game back then. And we used to make money that way. Yo, Ian Thug wants to know, what's your favorite band to tour with? Who? Wait, my band or like or the other bands? Yeah, just in general, like who's your favorite band to go to go on tour with? I, I Madball. Madball. Oh, makes sense. Because, because I, I love going on tour with them because we're best friends and and no matter what, we, when we tour, it'll be crazy shit happens and we argue all the time. But, but, People don't say we're, we're we're brothers. It's, it's not we grew up together. So, but when we when we go tour in Europe, we argue in front of people. We're like, oh, you got to fight? No, it's just, that's what we do. We're like we're all brothers. We we're like one day I look, we love each other, one day we hate each other. You know, that's how it is. You know. Yeah, but shout, I would die for those guys. Shout out to Mike Dijon. He said we got shot at in Brockton. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I did a lot. Uh, I got I got stories about Brockton, but yeah, Brockton. Is, uh, great, great. Boston Mike, rest in peace. Shout out to okay, Kale. We got, we got 10 minutes left. Uh, yeah. Q, Q Ball wants to know, what's your favorite John Joseph story? Oh, shit. I, I'll tell a story right now. A crazy story that no one knows about. Craig Satori knows about this. One time, I was at Coney on the High, and John Joseph was dressed as a, a, a roster. An all-black <laughs> roster and dreads. I didn't know it was him. He had his girlfriend on his side. And I was like, oh, shit, all right? See, I, I, people might get mad at the story, but the story is amazing. So I was hanging out, just me in a, a, in a small, you know, the, 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 the staircase to Coney Island High, the small the one going upstairs, and and um, his girl, and John's girl at the time was, was all done up. You mean, whatever, and he was like, yo, John, John, John. He always had a dope girl, and you know, he always walked around, and <laughs> Russell for underdog, boy, grabbed her ass. Whoa, hey now. Yo, listen. So I'm standing there. I see the whole thing happen. John turns around, fucks his mother. I'm so fat. Blah, blah, blah. Breaks his shit. The dude's funny. So the Russell comes running up. It's like for underdog, except for John. And John's like, yo, know, they were going to go. They were going to kill each other. That's Russell's boy. Ah. And I stopped it. I said, Russell, yo, your man, your man grabs his, her ass. And John's like, let's do this. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, if these guys fight, they're going to. Bite each other's ears off. These guys are both animals, you know what I mean? But I stopped it. I was a kid. 
they, they respected me to stop it. I was like, oh, shit. But they got to stop that shit because they would have killed each other. You know, it was, it, it, I've never seen John's eyes and Russell's eyes. They locked like pit bulls. It yeah. was just like, all right, all right, guys, guess not. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's crazy. Hey, uh, just to, uh, laser shorts, man. The, the, you get kicked off after an hour. That's why we have to go in 10 minutes. It's just that, that's just how Instagram works. It's not my, it's not <laughs> I know we're having fun here. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. It's a little deep. Junior FTS, what's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? <laughs> okay, my, my, girl, my girl just laughed. laughs. What, what, what I would say is, uh, I, no, no, I, okay. I, I would have done stuff in a way that I would try not to break my mom's heart. Yeah, the stuff yeah. I did. I did a lot of stuff that, you know, cops would come to my house and, yeah, you know, it, it it sucks that like 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 if like, we got a guy got cops coming to the house for like a, a attempted murder and fucking knife fights and shit and, and it, it sucks. I just got arrested a uh, fucking last year for fucking four felonies and yeah. and, and, yeah. and you know, this it's, it's just crazy. It, like, I I would have just walked away from stuff. And it, 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 it isn't that serious sometimes. I'm saying you gotta do stuff sometimes, but some of the shit I did was it was I should have done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 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 this stuff is like stuff I can't talk about in my life that was so ill. But I'm saying like I wouldn't want to break my mom's heart. That's all. Yeah. I feel you, man. I feel you. Um, Al. Okay, we'll 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 we'll, we'll get uh, to uh, uh, something a little more uh, less less dark and sad. Alexander Haber. Uh, shout out to Heavy Neal. Yeah, what's Break up? He wants to know. Um, <laughs> he wants to know uh, what your feelings are on uh, Varg and the whole Mayhem uh, movie and that whole thing. No, no, I, that, the movie's great. <laughs> I love the movie. You know, it, it, I got, me and my that movie again. That was uh, what was it called? It was. Uh, uh, what's the name of the movie? The, the Mayhem guys. They Lords of uh, Chaos. Lord, Lords of Chaos. Yeah. Lord of Chaos, yeah, it's, my girls are so good. Yeah, we were laughing. Yo, I just thought, I was like, just kind of fucked up. They were, they were all boys, and they, 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 they just did it for, for, he killed the boy over some stupid shit. You know what I mean? Like, Unbelievable. Yeah, and you know what you said, too? I was listening to you talk about it on your podcast. Like, uh, like these guys were, like, rich kids. and, they, and Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yo, he killed that dude over royalty checks. Like, he yeah. wasn't killing me that much, either. Like, <laughs> and plus, you live in... You you guys live in a, in, a, in a country where you you live good. You know, you're, you're, it's, it's, there's no bums in where they're from. There's no yeah, yeah. homeless people on the street. All their parents were like paying for all the records. And yes. All that shit. So fucking yes. nuts. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, yo, you know, I don't want to get too dark, guys. Everyone keeps asking about Rick to life. I think you've mentioned this too, but like. Oh, Rick to life. I'll say Rick to, Rick to life. I feel sorry for him. He has a mental, like, I know Rick when, back in the day. And we were cool, and, and, and the reason why I flipped on Rick because he he says a lot of stuff about my friends, uh, a, lot of, a lot of my my brothers uh, lost children or lost uh, loved ones, and he said stupid shit about that. And that I could not uh, turn my head on that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Rick's life is fucked up. He needs medicine, and I wish that he gets better. That's all. Yeah, yeah. No, he's obviously sick. So you yeah, know, he's sick. You know, he he sick. I wish he gets better. That's all. I, I know. I if he, do, I really do wish we should. At one point, I was friends with him, so I don't want everyone to wish harm on people. You know, that are mentally ill. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not trying to fucking uh, make people feel bad and talk shit. But um, yo, Isaac, I know we got a couple minutes left. Uh, yeah. But let's uh, let me ask you this: what uh, what are your feelings on the New York scene today? I know New York's changed a lot. How do you feel about uh, New York today in general, and just like the hardcore scene? Like, where do you see things at the moment? Uh, pros and cons, or whatever. Uh, well, you know, it, it's it's crazy because uh, when when the show we do shows, a lot of people do like. Oh God, it's sometimes it's it's. it's you know what the, the 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 Drew Stone shows that he's doing at A Seven, they were I heard they're doing great. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's that's good. There's a, I think there should be the new generation. The, the old generation should chill and let the new kids come in and do their thing. You know what I mean? Fuck it's yeah! Like, it's like it, it's we need new blood. And, and 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 I understand some people get mad. They're like, "Oh, they don't know who the fuck is." You know what I mean? Let yeah. them learn. That's it. You know There's I mean? a lot of young kids at these shows. I was talking to Gavin. Yeah. I was like, these young kids wearing Warzone patches and Murphy's Law. Good so for them. Like, Good for them. 
Yeah, it's fantastic, man. I hope that shit comes back because uh, my band Total Meltdown was supposed to play our first show with Killing Time, and and it's yeah. obviously not happening. It's, uh, <laughs> I, it's I, I know, but you know what? I, every give it time, everything's gonna be back to normal. You know, I, I, and, I, and 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 there's no way people. I know people are like, oh my god, what if it kills hardcore music? Because it's a, it's hardcore's a, a, a touch sport. You know what I mean? And people are just afraid. Yeah. Of, but you know what? It's gonna get, it's gonna go over. And you know nothing's ever gonna destroy Hawkeye. Hawkeye will always be there, bro. Yeah, let's do some uh, like uh, drop, like let's drop a few things right now, like um, uh, your socials, where to follow you. Some people that might have tuned in that might want to buy merchandise. So let's start with uh, uh, all of the socials. Uh, let's go there. So you you can go to Danny Diablo, my band page on Facebook. You can go Danny Diablo uh, on Twitter, and you go you go Danny Diablo underscore DMS on Instagram. I'm on Instagram most of the time. just, I just go here and there, but but it's so crazy with Twitter, people just love talking shit. It's like, you just be, you say the nicest thing, then all of a sudden they'll be like, like I, I, I was talking about, uh, uh, I was talking about you know, crazy stuff, like uh, I'm a man, you know what I mean? So if I say I like strip, strip, the strip club, and uh, you know, and, and I like women heels, you know, feminists will be like, how dare you? I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I, I, I'm not hurting nobody, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I, like I, I, it's just, cr it's just crazy how people love to just, like, just talk shit and want to be heard. You know I mean? No, it's crazy. The, the trolls, it's crazy. I, the Twitter, it's so insane, these people. You know what I mean? It really is. Like, we were talking earlier, too. It's like, dude, like, you have your podcast, Diablo's Den, and you've had Michael Alago, and you've had Mina Caputo, and it's like, dude, like, people just, um, it's a different time, and people go crazy on the internet. But, um. You have a bunch of stuff going on uh, it's in addition to the merchandise that people can buy, the New York hardcore merchandise. You got yes. coffee, right? People can buy coffee. Oh, I got Diablo's Dark Roast. Go to oak, oakandcrow.com and, 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 and hit, the, hit, the, hit the, the link and you got Diablo's Dark Roast. It's, a, it's great coffee. It's, a, it's fucking strong ass coffee. Uh, get that. Uh, you go to dannydiablomerch.com. Get the New York hardcore shirts. New York Hardcore oh, yeah. Streetwear. You know, go to Generation Records when they open again or to their website and get the New York Hardcore uh, Streetwear hats. And they can get the Di so. Di Di Diablo's Den. You can listen to it on Spotify. That's where I listen to it. Yeah, so, listen uh, and also go to uh, DiablosDenPodcast.com. So uh, final two minutes, you want to do some shout outs or, or just final words or anything like that or announcements? I, I uh, listen. I, I would love to thank you for this, Chris. Thank you so much thank for this. Give me an outlet to speak. You know, to talk. Uh, I like to thank my 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 girlfriend, Alexandra uh, Alexandra Rose Storm. Uh, I would like to thank. Uh, I like to thank my family. I like to thank the whole GMS Black and Blue Nation. Uh, I like to thank all the older guys that that, that put me on in the, in the hardcore world and hip hop world. You mean? Uh, I want to say that um, Joe Fado, his mother passed away from the, from this coronavirus. Uh, rest in peace to his mother. Uh, I just want to say that, that, that listen, it's better to to love than to hate. You right? Yeah, like, man. I, I stick, be be true to yourself. Listen, I I, I listen. I'm who I am. I, shout out to Deep. I am who I am. <laughs> listen, I am who I am, and I I'm not gonna change. I don't give a fuck. What social media? What people think? If, 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 if it's it's crazy because I don't even know how to deal with with one on one. That's why I, I have a manager because I can't deal with these people. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. like if they, like a lot of these little people had never get to say stuff and never got smacked. And that's the problem with these people. You know what I mean they're bad oh, on the no. keyboard. So so it's just like guys. Make love, not war. That's what I'm trying to say. Absolutely, and I know all you guys wanted us us to talk shit, and you know, I, I, it, it, it's, it's that's not what this is all about. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. guy went crazy on Twitter. Danny had a few things to say. Who knows if this guy's gonna even respond? It's entertaining, but we're not trying to promote violence or anything like that. No, no. Uh, listen, if we, can, if we can make a positive situation out of a crazy situation. Shout out to Ice T for the original original gangster. Uh, I just want to say, yo, Gavin, everyone, Craig Tari, fucking 